This type of content is by no means positive or uplifting. For the most part, it consists of stories filled with greed, disloyalty, treachery, betrayal, and misfortune. In life, laughter and good humor go a long way. Being able to laugh has many benefits. It's even known to reverse stress. And since we live in a stressful world, let's have a few laughs to start our day off. I think when most people characterize members of the mob, the word serious would come to mind as opposed to the word funny. But what most people don't know is a lot of guys in that life have a very funny sense of humor. So I'm going to mention a few stories that I hope will make you laugh. Years ago, there was a nightclub we used to go to in Queens called the Harbor Club. So one night I go, and the first person I run into was Johnny Boy Ruggiero. He was Angelo Ruggiero's son. We talked for a few minutes, and then he excused himself to go speak with the bartender. He came back over to say goodbye. He said he was headed to the city with the girl he was with. I said goodbye and watched him leave, and then I walked over to the bar to order a drink. I was a little confused by what the bartender told me. He asked if I wanted to start a new tab or keep the old one going. I told him I didn't know what he was talking about because I just walked into place. And then he said, oh, Johnny Boy told me to leave his tab with you. I was hysterical laughing and told him, just keep everything on the old tab. Unfortunately, Johnny Boy has since passed away. But anyone who knew him knows he had a lot of his father in him. Speaking of which, I was told a story about Angelo when he was doing time in Lewisburg prison years ago. He had gotten to an argument with a big black country guy named Wade. Supposedly, this guy Wade would go out to the weight pile, and people would watch in amazement at the amount of weight that he could lift. And they said he had muscles on top of muscles. So Angelo gets into an argument with this guy on the tier. And at one point, he tells Wade that he's talking to a good fella, and then proceeds to curse him. Wade, in turn, hits Angelo with one shot, and according to the people that were there, Angelo slid down a few cells. And then Wade turns around and tells him, I'm a good guy too. He had no idea what a good fella meant. Johnny Koenig was having trouble with his car. His car was making a knocking noise. So he decides to bring it to the mechanic and he leaves it with him. When his car is ready, he goes and picks it up. But the car is still making a noise. So he calls the mechanic up. And he asked him if he was able to fix the problem. And the mechanic told him that he did. So then he tells him, so why does it sound like two skeletons fucking on a tin roof? Years ago, in the late 80s, John Jr. and the younger guys would stay in his Uncle Richie's social club called Offense Social Club, which was located around the corner from his father's Bergen Hunt and Fish Club in Ozone Park. We were all there one night playing cards, and everyone got hungry. Sometimes they would send somebody to White Castles and order those belly bombers. But on this particular night, they called for some pies from La Villa, a pizzeria restaurant in Lindenwood, which is a section of Howard Beach. They were friendly with one of the owners whose name was Alfred. So the pies come about five or six regular in Sicilian. I was sitting across from Junior, who took a bite out of his Sicilian slice. And from that slice fell sauce, cheese, and a nut and bolt onto his plate. He picked it up and said, what the fuck is this? Then he called out, Anthony, get that kid Alfred on the phone. Tell him a nut and bolt just fell out of my pizza. Ask him, how many more pies do we got to order to get a ratchet set? When he said it, I almost spit my pizza out of my mouth. The Anthony he was speaking about was Anthony Amoroso, his childhood friend, who's very funny in his own right. Years ago, I met a girl who lived in Rosedale, Queens. She had an older sister who was in love with Anthony, so I set them up on a date. She was a very pretty girl, but a little bottom heavy, as they say. After their date, I asked Anthony how everything went. He told me she's a pretty girl, but when I went to pick her up, I noticed she was only pretty from the waist up. From the waist down, she was a sumo wrestler. So we had a laugh, and I told him that the father had a big trucking company named Something Express. I don't remember the first name. And Anthony said, yeah, I'll marry her. I'll take the company over, and then I'll name it Machine Gun Express. Anthony was known to say a lot of funny things that always had everybody laughing. Johnny Sideburns and I would eat at Gino's Pizzeria in Howard Beach a lot. One afternoon, we were there having lunch, and I remember we both ordered lentil soup, we had cappuccinos, and I think I had a slice of cheesecake. Obviously, not a whole lot of food. Well, when the waiter came and dropped the check off, somehow they charged us, I think it was $60 or $70, which is a lot for what we ordered. So I grabbed the check, and Sideburns asked me what the bill was. When I told him, right away he called over our waiter, and he said to him, what, did we break a window in his joint? Another time, Sideburns and I were kidding around about leaving the mob. I told him we should just get motorcycles and go on road trips. 
He said, no, we'll get one motorcycle with a sidecar, and I'll sit in it with my helmet and my goggles on. One night, we were all out of wake at Romanelli's funeral home in Ozone Park. When the wake was over, we were standing outside talking. It was Johnny Sideburns, Joey DiBenedetto, Anthony Guzzo, and myself. Somehow the topic of Florida came up. So Sideburns was telling us about Florida and how it was back in the day. Years ago, he spent a lot of time in Florida. And at one point, he's telling us a story, and he said, we had to go and meet with Maya Lansky. Anthony Guzzo cut him off. He said, you met with Maya Lansky? How the fuck old are you? We were all crying laughing. While in Fishkill Correction Facility, Ernie Grillo and I were friendly with a black guy named Polo. He was a big guy and a very nice guy, and on the street he had a security business for rappers. We were talking with him one day, and Ernie winked at me. He took out one of his contacts and threw it up in the air, and it landed on his forehead. He looked at me and he said, is it in? I said, nope, you missed. So Polo turns around and tells Ernie, you mean to tell me you have to do that every time you put them in? And Ernie told him every day, but usually I don't miss. I also did time with Fat Thomas D'Ambrosio, who's a friend with the Lucchese family. The prison was so overcrowded that they had Thomas sleeping in a hallway with a locker. And on top of his locker, he had all his cosmetics. Every night about 1, 2 in the morning, I would hear Thomas get up and go walk to the community bathroom. And the slippers that he had made a lot of noise. So I told all the guys I was going to pull a prank on him one night. Thomas used to go to bed early, so while he was sleeping, we crept over to his locker and we took dental floss and we tied all the tops of his cosmetics together. And then we tied the dental floss to one of his slippers and to one leg of the chair. So about two o'clock in the morning that night, Thomas, as usual, got up to go use the bathroom, sat in the chair, put his slippers on, and attempted to go walk to the community bathroom. He didn't get too far before there was loud crashes of all his cosmetics falling all over the place. And then the guard turned all the lights on and came running to see what the commotion was. And there was Thomas standing in the middle of the hallway who not only knocked all his cosmetics down, but dragged the chair about five feet as well. In prison, we had a lot of laughs, which helped to make our time go by. And laughter was our freedom and our escape. For those of us who are out here and are free, we need to be grateful for that. There's nothing more valuable than your freedom. So with that said, I hope that maybe one of these stories made you laugh. And may that laughter make your day be a better one. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Please remember to hit the like button. I want to thank and welcome all the new subscribers to the channel. And I thank the old ones as well. If you think friends and family may enjoy this, please share it and thank you. I wish everyone a nice weekend and I'll catch you on the next one.